Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Never in history has there been a tragedy greater than Karbala. Never in history has there been an innocent man as oppressed as Hussein. Never in history has a more pure family been imprisoned by his Ahlul Bayt. And of course, never in history has a more precious blood been shed than that on the day of Ashura. Never in history has there been a message more valuable than that which Zainab had to let the world know about. Zainab was entrusted with the message, the legacy of her brother. Her presence in that day was so important that one would think the movement of Imam Hussein alayhi salam would have been in vain if it wasn't for Zainab, if it wasn't for her courage, if it wasn't for her wisdom, if it wasn't for her patience. Welcome, brothers and sisters. I hope wherever you are in this vast globe, our voice and our image finds you in the greatest health. While your hearts are filled with the love of the Ahlul Bayt and you cherish their memories in your actions, in your doings, in your day to day lives. And of course, we hope to be in your prayers as you attend the majalis that are being held during these nights and days. And we hope that by having these gatherings, by having such programs as today's show, we can glorify and we can pray, pay tribute to the most greatest, most epic occurrence that took place in history and to all the majestic and divine characters that taught us the lesson of humanity. Thank you for being with us. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise is only Allah's Lord of the worlds. May His peace and blessings be upon the Master of all Prophets and Apostles, Muhammad, and His pure, immaculate Ahlul Bayt. Especially Imam of the time, Imam of the age, Imam of the worlds, our existent promised Imam, Al-Mahdi. May Allah hasten His glad advent. Assalamu alayki ya binta Rasulillah. Assalamu alayki ya binta Fatimata wa Khadija. Assalamu alayki ya binta Amir al Mu'minin. Assalamu alayki ya ukhta al Hassan wal Hussein. Ya Zainabul Kubra. Salam to you, dear brothers and sisters, our discerning, respected viewers of Safir TV. I hope wherever you are, Inshallah, all is well under the son of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them all, and under the flag of Imam al Hussein and Zainab, peace be upon them both. Before everything, 
I would like to extend my heartiest condolences on the saddest, tra uh, on the saddest tragedy which the history has ever known to itself, and especially on the martyrdom anniversary of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. You know, to know Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, we uh, require more than a program like this. But uh, I do my best to elaborate on the topics which are not elaborated till now about dignity and magnitude of this great personality. To know how great Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, was, it's maybe sufficient to refer to some of her great appellations and epithets. And it's truly one of the best ways to understand and to discern how important a personality is. Because these epithets, these special appellations were given to these kind of personalities by who? By the great, by the best of the people, our infallible Imams, or especially the venerable Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, one of the companions of, 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 of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was Ibn Abbas. This great man was a man of knowledge too. His supreme knowledge was admirable by many great knowledgeable people in his time and especially in our time. But this great man in knowledge, whenever wanted to narrate something from Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, used to use this kind of sentences and say that حدثتني عقيلتنا or حدثتني عقيلة العرب. What does it mean? You know, the Arabic عقيلة, the Arabic عقيلة means a noble woman. A noble woman who is honored among her people and is venerated in her house too. By what? By virtue of her wisdom. You know, Lady Zainab was such an honorable and virtuous lady that all her descendants were called Banu al the sons of the noble and wise woman. And it shows how great in wisdom she was, really. During the journey of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, from Medina to Karbala, she was the chief lady of the, the Itra, the Ahlul Bayt, the sons and the descendants, the progeny of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, was, obe was obeyed and respected by everyone there. She was known al aqila the noble lady, the most wise lady of the Arabs. How wise Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, was. It is not sufficient to just recite some ahadith or traditions. We surely need to consider different aspects, different authentic proofs, which they really prove how great she was in knowledge and in wisdom. The compiler and the author of the book, Asawar Min Dahab, when wants to talk about the memory, the strong memory of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, and also when he wants to elaborate on the perceptive, perceptiveness of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, refers to the sermon of Fadakiyah, the sermon which was uh, addressed, which was given by Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. Lady Zainab, while just was about seven years old, or even less than that, could memorize a very great sermon by the most eloquent words which an Arab can use. 
when she was just seven years old. But this personality with this high rank and stage of servitude in the sight of Allah, by this high rank and stage of knowledge in the sight of Allah and in the sight of all human beings, was suffered from many different pains and affilations and calamities. You know, when uh, Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, many years before that phenomenon, I mean phenomenon of Karbala, wanted to talk about the reward of respecting and serving Lady Zainab. She, he, he used to recite this hadith and say, إِنَّ مَنْ بَكَى عَلَيْهَا وَعَلَى مَصَائِبِهَا كَانَ ثَوَابُ بُكَائِهِ كَثَوَابِ مَنْ بَكَى عَلَى أَخِيهَا الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ what does it mean? It means the divine, the divine reward of weeping for Lady Zainab and for and at her at her uh, affilations and calamities is like the divine reward of weeping for her brother Imam Al Hussein, peace be upon him, and it shows how sad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at those hostels and enemies who made the seatbed of suffering Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. You know, uh, crying and weeping for Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, is a great and precious thing. Let me just uh, tell you a very beautiful story narrated by one of our Sunni brothers, Shablanji, who was one of the greatest uh, knowledgeable men of our brothers, our Sunni brothers. He says in his book named Nurul Absar, he says that one of our friends who was knowledgeable also, who was a great man in knowledge also, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Mughirri, in his book, Masharag al Anwar, says that I was steeped in problems, in hardships and difficulties in my life, and I really couldn't find any solutions to solve my problems. I didn't, do, I, I, I didn't have anything to do, and I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do, really. I heard from one of my Shia brothers that if you besiege into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, Allah will definitely give the answer of your prayer, no doubt. He said that he himself mentions this story in his book, Mashariq al-Anwar, that I just invoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I started worshipping my Lord through this great personality and my problem was definitely solved and that was why I wrote a beautiful poem about Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, and you can easily find it in his book. On her paternal side, her grandfather was Abu Talib, the father of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam, the man that fostered and nurtured and raised the Prophet of God in his childhood, during his childhood, a man that once he passed away, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declared that year as the year of mourning, the year of sorrow. Perhaps because Abu Talib was a distinguished a prominent character in the in Bani Hashim and because he was one of the greatest supporters of the Prophet of God and his cause and he was never reluctant he never hesitated to give the Prophet whatever means he needed in order to fulfill his responsibility and duty as God's messenger and of course her grandmother her paternal grandmother was a chaste, a pure, a pious and righteous lady, Fatima bint Asad, a woman 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed her to enter his house, the house of Kaaba, in order to give birth to her son. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved the mother of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam so much that when she passed away, he made sure to perform the rituals, he made sure to wrap her body in his own cloak as a blessing perhaps, and he weeped and he wailed at her death. And uh, there's also a narration in history where Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam cried immensely when his mother passed away and once he was when he was asked for the reason he said if it wasn't for such a mother i would not be so her lineage is a pure and exceptional one uh, one which we cannot see the likes of for anyone else in history she was raised in such a household with such people with such great and astonishing role models, people that were looked up to by their tribes and even by their enemies. And of course, there was her proximity, her closeness to her brothers, her brothers who would in the future become the imams and the leaders of that ummah, her brothers who were mostly and tenderly loved by the Prophet of God, her brothers who were always remembered by the companions and by the people who witnessed them as those who are favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. During these years that Sayyidah Zainab sallallahu alayha lived with her grandfather, lived with her mother and her father and her brother, their family was so wholesome, it was so warm, it was so loving and caring. She was so perfectly nurtured, she was so perfectly brought up and perhaps it could be marked and remembered as the most joyous time of her life. But unfortunately, this joy did not last very long. The Prophet would go on his last pilgrimage to the house of God. And on this pilgrimage, he would once more, and perhaps in the strongest way, with the strongest conviction and the strongest emphasis and focus, remind his followers and his people of how dear the Ahlul Bayt were to him and how important it was to follow them in order for the Ummah to be able to guarantee their own salvation. Um, I think we've all heard about that uh, notable day, the day of Ghadir, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was returning from the house of God along with Amir al-Mu'mineen and a few more family members and his companions and when they reached a certain part in the desert he asked everyone to stop for those who had went forward to come back for those who were left behind to catch up and it is said in narrations that that day the sun was so scorching hot in the Arabic desert that the people had to bring down the bottom part of their Arabic dresses and to stand on because the soil was so unbearable. And on that day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left a legacy that however was neglected.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين Lady Zainab سلام الله عليها She was born in this perfect family with the perfect grandfather and mother and father and brothers until the age of five she had the privilege of being amongst these great and wonderful people and she had the most beautiful years and the best years of her life during these five years but this happiness and did not continue as you know that Lady Zainab at her fifth year she lost her grandfather and then her mother before the, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam passed away she saw a dream one night she dreamt that there was a very strong and violent wind that blew and it was taking her away so in the dream she went towards a very big tree and she hung to that tree so the wind wouldn't take her away but the wind was so strong that it took this, the tree from its roots and it threw it to the ground. She then went to one of the branches of the tree, one of the big branches, and she hung to that branch, but the wind also broke that branch. And then she headed towards another branch. It too also was broken by the wind. And then she headed to other two smaller branches but they were also broken and afterwards everything looked black and dark. When she woke up, the next day she went to the Prophet, her grandfather, and she told him about the dream. And the Prophet, when he heard, he started to cry and he burst into tears. And he explained to Lady Zainab that that tree the big tree that you saw in your dream, that is your grandfather, it was me. And the first branch was your mother, Fatima, and the second branch was your father, Ali. And the other two branches, they were your brothers, Al-Hassan and al Hussein. And you will lose all of these. This dream means you will lose me first, then your mother, then your, your father, then your brothers, and you will witness all these tragedies and you will put on the mourning dress. You will mourn for them for their sake. So she dreamt of these tragedies before it happened. And as she, she saw in her dream, days passed and the Prophet of Islam, he realized that he would be soon departing this life. So he decided to inform the Muslim Ummah that he is going. And he had to inform them about his successor who would be leading the Muslim Ummah after his departing. So he did this in stages. First of all, he said to the Muslims that I will be leaving two precious things behind. I will be leaving you, but I will leave these, these two precious things, the Qur'an and my household and my progeny. The Prophet said, if you stick to these two, to the Qur'an and my household and to Ahlul Bayt, you will never uh, be deviated. You will never, uh, this will save you from deviation and you will never go astray. So the first stage was that he uh, informed them that they have to stick to the Ahlul Bayt and the Qur'an. In the second stage, he openly and frankly said that my successor is Ali ibn Abi Talib 
and he will lead you after me. In the famous narration, the hadith of Ghadir, you all know that the Prophet said after Hajjatul Wida'ah, he said in that big gathering of the Muslims, he addressed all of the Muslims there, and he said, مَنْ كُنْتُ مولاه فَهَذَا عَلِيٌّ مولاه. Whoever has taken me as master, then Ali shall be his master after me. So he addressed all the Muslims and he told them that my successor is Ali ibn Abi Talib and you have to follow Ali ibn Abi Talib. And another hadith, he said, Ali yun ma'al Qur'an wal Qur'an ma'al Ali hatta yarida Ali al Ali is with the Qur'an and the Qur'an is with Ali and they will never depart. So the Prophet, he announced that his successor is Amir al-Mu'mineen, but the Muslims, some of them, they plotted against this and they didn't accept it and they had unfortunate events after the passing of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. As you know, one of the titles and al-qab of Lady Zainab is Ummul Masaib, the mother of tragedies. She faced many tragedies from the age of five. And the first tragedy and calamity that she witnessed was the calamity of Thursday. As you know, the Prophet Muhammad in his final hours on his deathbed, he was surrounded by his companions and he asked for an ink well and a pen in order to rec record for them his last will. And he said, this will would save you from going astray. This was his most important will and his most important instruction to the Muslim Ummah. So he asked for an inkwell and a pen in order to write that will. But as you know, some of the companions who were plotting for the, to take over the leadership after the Prophet passed away, they knew what the Prophet's intention was. They knew that in the will, he wanted to declare and announce Amir al muminin as his successor and the leader after him. So they prevented from the writing of the will. One of these companions, he stood up and he approached the Prophet and he uttered these disastrous words that you know that were insultive to the Prophet. They, there, was no, there was no insult bigger and worse than this insult. 
to say to your prophet, the man is hallucinating. He said these exact words, The man is hallucinating. He didn't address him as the prophet. He didn't say the prophet is hallucinating. He said the man is hallucinating. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So he prevented from this to happen, from Rasulullah to write the will. And later on, after they went, they went out from the room and they did what they did. You know that the Prophet, he was very upset. And all the family were upset about this incident. Even later on, Ibn Abbas, the grand authority of the Islamic Ummah, he, whenever he remembered and mentioned this incident, he used to weep and cry and he called it the calamity of Thursday, Raziyya to Yawm al Khamis. This was the first calamity that the household saw and Lady Zainab saw. But after a few days, when the Prophet he departed this life and he passed away, Lady Zainab saw her mother and her father mourning and weeping for the Prophet's passing away. She witnessed the whole family fall apart when the Prophet passed away. That day when the Prophet, the day of the martyrdom of the Prophet was the day, in fact, the, it marked the beginning of Lady Zainab's sufferings and tragedies. This marked the day that her sufferings will begin. After that day, Unfortunate events came rolling towards the Prophet's household one after the other. After the death of the Prophet, you all know that the Prophet wasn't buried yet. And many of his companions even didn't attend the brief funeral that took place in his own house. They didn't attend, they didn't give their respects to the Prophet's body they didn't even attend the ceremonies that took place, the prayer on the Prophet's body. And uh, they went to a place called Saqifat Bani Sa'ada. Instead of going to the Prophet, they gathered around in a place called As-Saqifa in order to plot for the leadership after the Prophet. And they didn't even mention the incident of Ghadir and how the Prophet announced as Ali ibn Abi Talib as his successor and the leader after them. They didn't even man- mention that incident. Instead, they were plotting and planning for their own leadership in that place. And Lady Zainab witnessed that the same people, they attacked their house in order to bring Ali ibn Abi Talib by force to pledge allegiance to the leader that they had appointed. They took the Imam by force, dragging him in the street. Lady Zainab saw her mother Fatima to Zahra trying to prevent them from taking her father Ali ibn Abi Talib. But as you all know, Fatima was pregnant and you know what they did to Fatima to Zahra. They beat her viciously until she miscarried her child, until they broke her arm, until they broke her rib. Lady Zainab had to witness these calamities and tragedies and the suffering of her mother Fatima to Zahra. Salamullahi alayha. of Sayyidah Zainab Salaamu uh, Aside from spe- spreading the message of Aba Abdullah, aside from sharing with the world her brother's prophecy, she had another very important responsibility and duty. Um, Sayyidah Zainab Salaamu Alaiha possessed such a high 
spirit, such a high level of humanity. She was so aware of every aspect of Islamic ethics and morals. She had total prominence over the teachings of Islam, the teachings of the holy book. She was so well trained by her father, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. And though she had lived very short years with her mother, Sayyidina Fatima sallallahu alayha, but she had absorbed so much from her mother's love, from, her, from the way her mother nurtured her, from the way her mother brought her up to be a strong, independent, extraordinary woman, that she was capable of doing the same thing as a mother for her kids. She raised children so selfless, so deep, so spiritual, that even at a very young age, we have to know that uh, sometimes looking back at history is very important because of these little things. The sons of Sayyidina Zainab Salam Alaiha and Abdullah bin Jafar were well off. One could even say that they were the aristocrats of Medina because they had a rich father and their mother was a very profound personality and they were descendants of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> they were noble people. But when it came to sacrifice, when it came to selflessness, when it came to putting their imam before themselves, they did not hesitate for a single moment. They did not think twice. As a matter of fact, they rushed to embrace death if it meant defending their imam and their religion. This is something that Sayyidah Zainab Sallallahu was capable of doing. Not only her, but what many women in Karbala and the women of all the companions and all the family members of Imam Hussein. This was the role that Sayyidah Zainab Sallallahu was capable of portraying as a mother. And this is something else that we have to reflect upon. Have we been able to firstly refine ourselves to a level of selflessness? Have we been able to absolutely, in every aspect of our lives, put our imam and our religion as a priority before everything else? as a mother, as a sister, as a daughter, as a wife, as a woman, have we been able to put the teachings of God, the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, before our own benefits, before our own desires, firstly, and then secondly, by being so, have we been able to be a proper role model for our kids? When it comes to training our kids, when it comes to their upbringing, the things that we try to teach them, is it more about what Zainab did, how Zainab did it, why Zainab did it? Or is it more about what my baby wants, how my baby wants it? Is my baby happy? I'm not saying that those things aren't important as a mother or as a woman. We are naturally compassionate sympathetic creatures. We naturally care about the heart more than every other aspect of a human being. But we have what we have to understand is, in history, there is no heart more tender than Zainab's heart. There is no heart more filled with emotion and passion than Zainab's. And if she wants to really make a heart glow, she has understood that it has to glow through the love of Hussein. Zainab, peace be upon her, uh, got married with Abdullah bin Ja'far, son of Ja'far Tayyar, peace be upon him. Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, had five children, four sons and one daughter. Let me tell you the names of her sons. 
number one was Ali, and number two was Aun al Akbar, and number three was Muhammad, and number four was Abbas. And the name of her exalted daughter was Umm Kulthum. Why did I say that? Why did I suddenly go to the, 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 the life of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her? You know, two of her sons also participated in the war of Karbala. I mean, Ali and Aun al-Akbar. And they were both martyred, murdered in this battle. Why did I say that again? Because I want to say that Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, was really epitome of, of the best things in Islam. How? You know, there is a very beautiful verse in the glorious Quran which gives us the answer of this question. The answer of the sentence I told you being epitome of the best things, of the best religious things in the sight of Allah, the pure sense. That verse is this, and for its speciousness, I'm going to recite this verse for you, and then I will give you the translation of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his glorious book says, وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافَّةٌ فَلَوْ لَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةٌ لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي الدِّينِ وَلِيُنْذِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَحْذَرُونَ what does it mean? The translator says, And the believers should not all collectively go out to fight. Of every group of them, why should not a number stay to acquire and study the knowledge of religion at the messenger's presence? Why? Why not? So that they may warn their people when they return to them from the war, perhaps they become aware of their duty to their Lord, Allah, the pure essence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and abstain from disobedience of Allah's commands. What, what does it really come and occur to your minds? Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, was a perfect example for both sides of this verse. There are many knowledgeable people, those who are really uh, steeped in knowledge, they're men of knowledge, but based on, and according to this verse, they did not participate in what? In the wars. Why? Because they stayed at, in their classrooms, in their schools, so that they can teach people, so that people can acquire knowledge through coming to their classes. And on the other side, there were very strong people who were not great in knowledge and they went to war and some of them, and most of them were martyred. Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, was the, 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 per, the most perfect exemplar of the best religious things. Why? Because she could cover Bo the both sides of this verse. I mean, being knowledgeable. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, being knowledgeable and and holding and holding different classes for teaching people. Like I said before, she had great classes of teaching of teaching knowledgeable women from different parts of the country and the city on the topic of interpretation of the Qur'an. And also, she participated in the most saint war, the war of Karbala. So this great and noble personality could cover both sides of being best in the sight of Allah. In these days, because of many reasons, 
we're facing different hardships and difficulties in our lives. And sometimes we really get tired of everything. We feel that we're on we're in the in the last in the last moments of, of, of the pleasure in this worldly and terrestrial life. And sometimes, unfortunately, some of us we go to pessimism about our religion. We go to pessimism about our Lord, about our Creator, about our cherisher, about the one who provides us with worldly and other worldly sustenance. But it's wrong, dear brothers and sisters. You know, if we know the shortcuts, the shortcuts of acquiring the proximity of our Lord, we will definitely succeed. If you have problems, if you have hardships and difficulties, couldn't find any solution to solve them, you got to be sure that you did not choose the correct way, the shortcut of getting close to your Lord so that you can get the answers of your prayers. What is that? What is that shortcut? What is that short God which comes to the rescue and gives us the best solution to, fall, to, to, to solve our problems? I know that is so difficult. And sometimes, unfortunately, I see good people. I my friends. They went to pessimism about their world. They went to pessimism about their religion. I'm sure they also didn't know the true way. You know, God, our Lord, in His glorious book, tells us a very important point. The point, if I tell you, you can easily find the shortcut, or better to say, you already found that shortcut. God says, wasila." What does it mean? The first part of the verse says that Fear Allah. But, you know, fearing Allah doesn't have a negative meaning. We don't have any negative meanings in Islam because we believe Islam is a way of life and a way of life cannot have any negative specs. Fear Allah means do your duties towards your Lord. Abstain and refrain from the things which are undesirable to your Lord. I mean, al-muharramat, and keep aloof from them all. From keep yourself aloof from committing sins, and also do your duties, the compulsory ones. I mean, al-wajibat. This is the meaning of taqwa. And if you want to near to your Lord, wabtaqu ilayhi al-wasila. What does it mean? It means seek the means of approach unto your Lord. Seek the means of approach unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are they? You know, God in His glorious book says, whenever you want to call on me, whenever you want to pray, whenever you want to ask me for your wants, for your needs, for your requirements, فَدْعُوهُ biha. What does it mean? It means ask God through the best names of outstanding. Al Asma'ul Husna. Ask God through Al Asma'ul Husna. The best names which they all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once when the companions of Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, they consulted to him asking about the meaning of this verse. He replied that, Wallahi nahnu al Asma'ul Husna. By the Lord of the worlds, we are the best names which you have to besiege, you have to invoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through. وَابْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ Seek the means of approach unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Means, and I'm sorry, is the shortcut. I told you, in these special days, the means which we have to we have to beseech Allah through is Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. And this is the best shortcut. Why? Because you're, you're invoking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through 
his best servant. Lady Zainab, who sacrificed whatever she had just for the sake of it. for once more tuning into our show and being with us through today's journey as we embarked on a travel in order to learn about the character who would say the Zainab Salaamu Alaiha. Of course, if we make thousand more segments about this luminous person in history, it would still not be enough. But we hope with the opportunity, the time and the facility handed to us that we've been able to make the best of it. And through this time, we hope that you have had been able to have valuable takeaways from today's program. I hope that your mornings are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Hussain be with you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.